everyone, and thank you so much for joining us today as we discuss wave three and the realities and differences of this stage of the pandemic and what this means for the province, for Southwestern Ontario, and specifically for Sarnia Lambton. We have three panelists joining us today. Uh, first of all, thank you, Dr. Chakrabarty, for joining us. He's an infectious disease specialist. He is working on the front line of one of the many hospitals in the DTA, uh, right in the thick of the crisis. Uh, so thank you for taking the time. Uh, I do appreciate your perspective that you bring to the table. Dr. Haddad is also here with us today, Chief of Staff at Blue Water Health, and Blue Water Health is a, is a two-site hospital in Sarnia-Lampton. And finally, we have a Dr. Renaday as well. Thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. He's a Medical Officer of Health for um, Lampton County and covers an area of approximately 120,000 people. So we're going to start with Dr. Chakabarty. This is how it's going to work, gentlemen, is that we'll each have you kind of, uh, you know, just go through and the order is Dr. Chakrabarty and then in the order actually that I discussed it. And then at the end, um, uh, we will uh, open it up for some media questions, okay? Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate your, your candor and your time. Awesome, so I just start, okay. Well, uh, again, thanks for having me. Uh, it, it's uh, it's great to be here. Uh, I actually kind of like this because it's been a bit of a break in the day for um, what has been really uh, somewhat of a, a merry-go-round, unfortunately, for the last uh, couple of weeks. But uh, so I, I'm glad to say it. I work in the Peel region. Uh, at Trillium Health Partners. So we're one of the hardest hit hospitals uh, in the entire country, uh, uh, let alone uh, Ontario. So um, I think that uh, what we're seeing here on the ground, it's a very different pandemic uh, this way around. I'll start with a good note that uh, the vaccines work. Uh, you, you guys probably remember in the first and second wave, both of which we were also hit hard in, the entire floor was just uh, nursing home patients, right? And it, it was just remarkable how that was. Now, literally, we have, I think we have over 150 patients admitted to the, the, uh, the hospital, uh, something around that line, uh, and we have zero, um, zero uh, nursing home patients. So I think that just shows that it's a huge absence, uh, and because you don't see that, it's hard to kind of understand how much of, a, of an effect that was before. Now, of course, we are seeing uh, a, a lot more people that are younger, and I think a lot of what we see here is that uh, it's people that, yes, the variant is an issue, but it's people that are especially coming from regions where there is massive, heavy, prolonged indoor exposure. So this is not the person at the park. This is not the person in your home sense lineup. This is a person who's working in a factory next to other people that have been uh, sick, they're next to each other for hours and they get it there and then come home and unfortunately give it to family members. So it's the same story over and over and over again. Factory, family, factory, family. And uh, uh, that, that's something that's a, a, a big in the Toronto region. And this kind of uh, leads to why I have been a little bit uh, concerned about the way the media has been portraying the, you know, stay home, stay home, stay home. It's important but the thing is, this massive number of cases coming from people who precisely can't stay home. So I think that's the big thing. And, and the, the final thing is that uh, right now, um, I really want to thank um, all of the, the hospitals that have been helping us here in the GTA. Sarnia has been one of them uh, to really kind of uh, step up. Uh, pretty much the whole uh, Southwestern Ontario has been uh, destinations for patients coming from the GTA, especially in uh, uh, the, the Peel region and Scarborough as well. So that's great. And, you know, we I know it, it doesn't seem like this now, but we will get through this. And I just want to uh, say that uh, it's very real. Dr. Haddad. Thank you so much, Dr. Chakrabarty. Dr. Haddad. Yeah, thank you uh, for having me. And uh, Dr. Chakrabarty, it's always great to uh, have you uh, with us and uh, get your perspective from, from the epicenter in Peel. Um, I'd like to echo what um, we've just heard, actually. Um, it, it feels like a, a different kind of pandemic within a pandemic. And uh, again, the first wave, we treated many patients, um, mostly seniors, citizens, and uh, congregate settings, uh, retirement homes, long-term care homes. But with vaccination, things have changed quite a bit. But unfortunately, we are seeing uh, uh, more patients at the hospital who are of, um, the, the age group seems to have expanded. I mean, we've had patients in their 40s, 50s, and 60s who are critically ill, actually, not just hospitalized, but also in our ICU, for example, on, on mechanical ventilation, life support. Um, we don't have, and, you know, Dr. Randy will comment, can comment more on the local um, community here, but uh, like from a hospital standpoint, we're not seeing the same number of patients as our colleagues in the GTA are seeing. 
um, but we also don't have the, uh, the extent and the, and the number of you know, factories and essential workplaces, for example, as, as Toronto and Peel specifically. But uh, we have been uh, receiving some of their patients, uh, some GTA patients, um, and I've been in contact with many of my colleagues in different hospitals, both in the South and the East, um, Kingston, Ottawa, um, um, Windsor, and uh, here in Chatham. So London, uh, we've been uh, taking patients uh, from the GTA. And I mean, it's a one system, right? Provincial system trying to help out um, all of our patients. Um, I'm glad that locally our numbers are not as um, um, uh, large, but but or great, uh, which actually gives us a bit of more room to be able to help. Um, and you know, um, so that's the situation on on the ground for now. Uh, we 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 have noticed a steady increase in number of our patients, both local and from elsewhere. Um, not not as much as uh, the first or second wave so far locally, but definitely the vaccines do work and um, um, we have not seen someone who's fully vaccinated yet or has received even one vaccine has been ill as long as it's uh, i mean the, the one thing that i've been explaining to our patients and families as well is that vaccine don't work right away just because you've been vaccinated it takes two three weeks to work and um, and we still have to maintain our you know follow the what what the what public health is telling us in terms of following all the public health safety measures uh, until things recede a bit or ease off a bit Dr. Ramaday, can you talk about, I know some people in Sarnia and Lenten are having a difficult time seeing the scope of what's happening in, in the GTA, and I think they perhaps feel that there's an opportunity to take our foot off that gas pedal. Are you able to kind of give us some context? Of course. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Dr. Chakraborty, it's nice to see you, and, and uh, thanks for joining us too, and Dr. Haddad as well. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think, so, so, there's a couple of things here, right? When we look at our numbers um, locally, they have come down tremendously from what they were. And that is as a result of being in a significant phase of restrictions and the effect of those restrictions on our numbers, right? So the, the challenge that we have now and what I'm really concerned about is the idea that people look at our numbers and say, we're okay here. And that COVID becomes something that's happening over there. So I wanna talk a little bit about what over there really means and how over there is actually connected to over here. In some ways over there is even places around the world that are now experiencing significant resurgences of COVID-19. So when you look at news reports from places like New Delhi, it's tempting to say, oh, that's way over there. New Delhi has run out of oxygen in ICU beds and people are going out into the open market to buy oxygen for their relatives because it is not provided through the system. So let's take a moment to be grateful for the things that we have here. But secondly, when we think about over there as being Toronto and looking at over there and saying that's over there, that's not, not here, you have to realize that the thing that connects over there, Toronto and over here, Sonia Lambton is that we share a health system that is a finite and fixed resource. So when people are overflowing into the ICUs and into the beds over in the GTA, that does two things to our hospital system here. First of all, like Dr. Haddad says, in the, in the immediate term, we can help out by taking some of those patients. But one of the challenges is that if we also become overwhelmed, then we may be able to, unable to, in the long run, take our own patients if they need help, right? And so at, with working with a fixed finite set of healthcare resources, we have to think that over there, Toronto is basically here. And part of our part of helping is to enable our health system to help out from other places. But part of our personal part of helping is to say that we as Ontarians need to do this together. And how we do that is by limiting our activities where possible to only those things that are essential. Dr. Chakravarti just talked about how sometimes people have, you know, you have to go into work, you have to go into work, and that becomes a significant source of exposure. But do everything you can to limit your activities to only those things that are essential and to limit your close prolonged contact with people outside of your home to only those things that are essential. Keep them short, keep them brief, and keep them essential. And otherwise, stick to the group in your house and do all of the things that we've been doing so well for so long. Just keep them up. It's really tempting to look and say, our numbers are fine. Maybe we can go do these things. And that's how everybody gets into trouble around the world. And it will happen here too. And we can't afford for that to happen right now because of it's, what's already happening in the GTA. 
So maybe I'll leave it there. Fabulous. Thank you very much, all three of you. I think you bring slightly different angles to this story, and I think it's important. Um, and I, I'm going to ask for the recording to stop now. Thank you so much, Christina. And, uh, and I'm going to open.